Yeah, we have some special guests joining us this evening. All oh, right. And uh, these these were actually made by our good friends Liz and Gordon. And these uh, uh, you may have seen this at uh, Halloween. There were two of these that that uh, made an appearance, and they've gotten a lot of press since then. And and this just kind of represents the creative part of Los Alamos. I think everyone knows there's science here, but what everyone doesn't always know is that uh, when the original scientists were here, they brought with them so much creativity. They started so many things, the little theater, the symphony orchestra, those kinds of things, and today that continues. Um, so I just wanted to introduce the Creative District to you real quick. In 2009, the state designated the Creative District as part of a statewide network of arts and cultural districts organized through the New Mexico Arts and Cultural District Post Program. The mission of the Creative District is to advance the community's unique creative identity and generate increased economic prosperity by curating and providing local cultural programming. What, what does that mean to us? Well, it means we're trying to bring arts into the everyday life of Los Alamos. And I think a lot of people that are here uh, actively participate in that. Uh, this evening I'd, I'd like to introduce uh, my new best friend, Patrick Nair, who is the executive director of the uh, Los Alamos uh, Arts, Council. Arts Council. Thank you. And uh, Patrick and I have, uh, in the short time Patrick's been here, we've collaborated on a number of different things. October, as you guys may well know, is the Arts and Cultural Month. Uh, oh, thank you for turning the music down. We appreciate it. And uh, we. Uh, sponsored and, and produced the uh, Evening of Arts and Culture. Did anybody come out for that? It was a big hit. There were, we figure almost 2,000 people that came out for the event. And there were nine, more than 19 uh, bands and groups and poets and artists that participated. And it brought out a lot of people and it, it just was really representative of the things that go on in, in Los Alamos. And what's the population? The population of Los Alamos County is 18,000. Okay, so 2,000? Yeah, so that, that absolutely was not bad. Um, so I just, I wanted to share with you a few different things that, that I've done. Our, uh, the, the, what the creative district does is outlined in this very substantial plan uh, and I work with the uh, the county I report to the county and uh, to Suzette Fox with the Main Street uh, organization and we're trying to for a little while not much has happened with the creative district and I'm just kind of trying to jump start that a little bit we've been doing some some fun things that seem to have been well received. Excuse me, Miss Judy. I don't know if anybody had a chance to see these. It was a skeleton that we made a template of. That you made. Yes, and we spray painted it in three different locations around town to advertise the uh, Halloween that Main Street produced. It's on. Thank you. And then. Uh, you know, we, we try and just do quirky, fun things around town to bring interest to the, the creative district. Um, thanks, Ms. Trudy. So one of the other things that we did, this was um, in September, we did a pop-up park right downtown on Central Avenue for parking day. And again, this was kind of just to bring attention to the downtown uh, creative district area, and it, it was kind of fun. We got some uh, some attention from dogs in town. And <laughs> Liz and Gordon stopped by, and uh, you know we had a number of people just come by and say, "What's this all about?" There's a box sitting there. And you had you had some donations from stuff from investors. We did some local businesses contributed different things, and it it was just kind of a fun thing to do. And that's what the Creative District really is all about. Um, we do different wacky things like 
there's Oppenheimer dressed up as a stormtrooper. And I don't know if any of you guys saw that on in the local media, but uh, there was a young man who was dressed up as a stormtrooper who got a lot of mileage out of that. So. And uh, well, I tend to dress up Avi and Groves a lot, and it drives Heather McClinahan crazy, but here's uh, Groves as Batman also this year, so that one did, did fairly well too. And these fun little projects get a lot of attention on social media, and really what everything is designed to do is to bring people into downtown, to get them to come down and go to the local restaurant, shop at the local stores. Yes, so we do, we do a number of things. This On Tap uh, program happens twice a month. It's always Science On Tap the third Thursday of each month. Um, and on the first Thursday of each month, it rotates between nature, art, and history. And, and they're great, and they, the Science On Tap has a huge following. So it's, it's fun to, uh, to do these. Uh, here's a, a vine. On, the, on a stop sign in downtown. Any of these little projects that we've been doing, we're trying to identify as hashtag creative Los Alamos so that people know that we're not just randomly tagging out there. So, um, we are also trying to bring youth into the downtown creative district projects. And we're speaking with the, um, our, one of the art teachers at the high school right now and we're trying to get a high school artist. We have permission from CB Fox to do, this is all with chalk paint, all of these projects. And uh, this is something the youth really are interested in having in downtown Los Alamos. And it's just angel wings on a building and the kids Snapchat themselves in front of it. How was that, Katie? Was that all right? Snapchat themselves, Instagram themselves. <laughs> Uh, they do it in many communities. They do it in many communities. Yes. No, I know. Uh, so the county has gotten behind this and has gotten kind of excited. We do silly little things that the county seems to tolerate. I don't know if you've noticed, there have been a lot of googly eyes around town lately, which are kind of uh, interesting. The county has expressed an interest in, have, in uh, collaborating with the Creative District on this kind of floating crosswalk downtown. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's neat. I, I'm not sure everybody quite gets what it is. It's just an opt optical illusion. It's a 3D. Yeah, and you can only really see it from one point. But it looks like we will be collaborating with the county on doing this downtown. And who's the artist to do that? You? You're looking at her. All right. So, um, I, I don't have an artistic bone in my body, but what I can do is find things online that I think fit in our community. And I have Suzette Fox, who's my secret weapon when it comes to the arts, and she comes out with me and does lots of different things. This is uh, some fractal art that's brand new that we put up this summer. On It replaced the old fractal art on the side of Metzger's. And we're still waiting for the county to get the little sign up there that says who the artist is. And uh, so we're looking to do more of that kind of thing around town. Um, I, I started having people reach out to me and say, what about doing this sort of thing? I, I don't know if you guys ever saw, have seen this in other communities, where they just bring out a piano and set up some place where it's protected from the weather. And, you know, there are so many people in this town that are musically inclined. We think it would be a great thing to do. We're just not sure where to do it. Uh, the piano's not the problem. We already have one. We just don't quite know where to do it. Well, I think Ken has said he would donate one to us if we can find the place to put it, so we're not sure. Uh, and there are some fun ideas in here that people have suggested to us. I think this us. is, uh, you know, sacrilegious. You do? You don't paint a piano. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, I know but, um, you know, for me, what's been interesting about this is how 
the county is so supportive of any of this stuff that we want to do. Someone found this. It's like a shadow art. The county said, "Do it. Just do it. Go for it." You know, they're yeah, and they're they're just. They, it's just a matter of having someone get out there and do it. So we're uh, that's that's on our schedule to do at some point. I've been putting things. We have that neat chalk house that the county made us, kind of over in front of CB Fox Kids. We've been putting fun things on there, like this reboot universe with a button. And I don't know if you've noticed, whenever you put anything up there, it goes away pretty quick with people writing over it. This stayed for almost a week. So, you know, it was just, it was just kind of interesting. The one thing the county doesn't want me doing is putting signs like that over the buttons on the crosswalks yeah. because they're <laughs> tools. So, um, the county has approved for us to do some artwork on um, the manhole covers, like make it into an Oreo. And you know, it's like, okay, I'll, I'll. Have approved them? Yes, they told me to do it. They said go for it, which is um, very interesting. I, w I don't know where one gets a large red ball like that, but I would love to put it in between uh, CPO and CB Fox. So, I don't know, Patrick, can you get your hand on that point? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> This is uh, this is coming out soon. It, it's just one brick in the wall, and it has a stencil, and it says, "I'm not just another brick in the wall." And you know, it's just kind of fun, quirky stuff that makes people interested in getting downtown, and getting involved. Um, here's some more of the shadow art which is fun. I would love to do something like that in that alleyway. You know, Deacon, Al Deacon Street is slated to be redone next year, Susan. What's and Deacon Street is back behind Metzger's and exactly CB Fox. Street, but it doesn't look like a street. Right. It looks like our like alley. It looks, yeah, Deacon Alley, yeah. You know, so. But there's that neat little passageway. Oh, back behind there. So there's that passageway right along the side of CB Fox that is just right to be made into something really cool. And Suzette has been trying to do something there for a long time. So look forward to something creative coming yeah, we once should that have has a been block party on there. Yes. With music and food and, and all that. Just yeah. a little block party. I'm, and I'm trying to come up with just the right meeting. property owner that wants these dandelions painted in their parking lot. Rashad, I don't know, and where'd he go? He's not. Anyhow, just the right property owner needs to step up for that one. So these are kind of some of the fun different things we've talked about doing. Um, next year for Science Fest, uh, we're talking about doing some fun different projects, possibly. Um, the There has been a plan in existence for a long time to possibly um, do some medallions um, to honor some of the early scientists here and make it kind of a, uh, set them into the sidewalk. And the county is interested in doing this. It's just a matter of coming up with the funding. Uh, make it kind of a scientist walk of fame, if you will. So we're looking at possibly doing something like that next year for Science Fest. Make sure you have stars in Hollywood. You could do an atom of and put their name on it. There you go. And the there county would love that because we could use their logo. Which is, yeah. Absolutely. But you know the the uh, when the sidewalk when all of the streetscape was redone along Central Avenue. They put those bricks in there um, specifically so they could do interesting things like this project. So they're very supportive. But those medallions are about $1,000 a piece. So uh, Nancy Bartlett already has a plan in place for this. Uh, it's just a matter of coming up with the funding to get this done. So anyhow, I, um, I want to 
now pass this over to Patrick, and he's going to tell us. Uh, he's got some great handouts, and he will tell you a little bit about what the Arts Council is doing and um, how wonderfully successful they have been. So this is a, an interesting piece that he'll go ahead and pass out about how important it is having arts in your community. It, it really is more and more an economic forever. Yes, ma'am. Wait. Wait. Before you hand over to Yes. Um, Rin, I think that you guys have done a really great job of listening to the public for ideas. And I think part of the reason they're willing to let you do some of this is because you have done a good job of selling it. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. Absolutely. It couldn't happen with 